Simple Truth brand makes it easy to find better for you products that are free from unwanted ingredients. From fresh produce and snacks to household cleaners and more, you won't find artificial ingredients, preservatives, or harsh chemicals in Simple Truth products. So you can fill your fridge and your home with simple, easy to understand choices you can feel good about. Just look for the green Simple Truth circle to get the quality items you want free from the ingredients you don't want. Simple Truth, exclusively at Baker's. When you download the Baker's app, you have easy access to savings every day. Get the most out of weekly sales and receive personalized coupons to save on your favorite items, all while earning one fuel point for every dollar spent. Baker's makes it easy to save while you shop, whether it's in-store or online, so you get the most value out of every trip, every time. Download the Baker's app now to save big on your next purchase. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Must have a digital account to redeem offers. Restrictions may apply. See site for details. Episode 228 is episode 118, Tips for Creating a Capsule Wardrobe. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And today we are playing a greatest hit that you guys loved and still love, and it's about creating a capsule wardrobe. Mm. This has been a lifestyle. Now, Mm -hmm. we're about to talk about it, but capsule can be defined in a lot of different ways. But just minimizing clothing, not becoming so stressed out and not saying, I have nothing to wear anymore Mm -hmm. because you love what's in your closet. Yeah. And I think more so is is just creating versatility. I think Mm -hmm. that is the, after you listen to this episode, versatility is really the word we want to you to take away from all of this. So we're very excited to reshare with you what so many of you have already gotten so much out of in just reminding you about the importance of good quality, versatility, and keeping clothes out of landfills. We also want to remind you Christmas is around the corner. Oh, gosh. This episode is brought to you by a sinking fund for Christmas. Yeah, that's right. I said it. It's just under five months away, which means if you want to spend $500 on Christmas, you can save that with just $100 per month. Want to budget $1,000? Save $200 per month. Want to spend $2,000? Ask yourself why. Whatever you want to (laughs) save, put it into a high yield savings account separate from your regular checking account. And it keeps you from spending it early. Right now, CIT Bank's Savings Connect account is offering 1.35% APY. So head to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash CIT to start your Christmas sinking fund in a high yield savings account at CIT Bank, frugalfriendspodcast.com slash CIT. You'll thank me later for thinking ahead for the holidays. Yeah, they say it's, it's never too early to start thinking about Christmas, but it is it, there is a limit, and we think August is probably the right time. Every to time start thinking. I put my decorations away, I think I can't wait for next year. So, Same. like, I start on December twenty sixth, looking forward to the next year. So, it, it really is never too early for me. And I got my amazing, cute niece Amelia to be just as exciting as just as excited as me. Every time we see each other, we're like, it's almost Christmas. It doesn't matter what time of year it is. It's like our thing. That's adorable. It is adorable. Well, (laughs) let's transition to clothing. And this can include your Christmas uh, capsule as well. You can have different capsules depending on your climate. And uh, if you want to queue up a few extra episodes to play after this, kind of in the same realm, um, you can check into episode 211, which is how to save money on clothes. And then episode 156, how to avoid impulse spending, because that's a big thing with clothes. I feel like sometimes I will go into my closet and say, I have nothing while I'm looking at all of these clothes. 
clothes and then just go out and buy clothing uh, without any actual plan for it, just because I like it without thinking of the versatility, the quality, the longevity of style. So Mm -hmm. this is going to try, we're going to try and help you move away from that cycle into a more intentional cycle. So without further ado, let's do it. Let's dive into our first article. Thank you. You're, yes. I, I see that look on your face. <laughs> I'm just like not understanding, but going with it. I'm on. I'm along for the ride. If you have had a baby, you understand. It's. I'm still working on getting back into my pre-pregnancy clothes. Like Which I is hate why... people that just get there without Ugh. trying. But it's why a capsule wardrobe could help so that you don't have to buy as many clothes to keep up with (laughs) your carb intake. I know. I'm about to give up and just like go out and buy new clothes. Like I'm done with like body shame guilt. So I'm excited for today's second article specifically. But the first one is from Courtney Carver. And we had her on the show um, a while ago. I should have looked up the the name or the number, but the number, yeah. we, we had her talking about minimalism and this is her article on how to build a capsule wardrobe because she actually created project 333. And that is all about having 33 items and using only those for three months. And so to me, that's a little like more extreme than a capsule wardrobe, uh, but still a cool challenge to try if you want to. Yeah. I like, first of all, this specific article that we're talking about today and that we're sharing in our show notes goes through how to how to build a capsule wardrobe. Not necessarily what you're going to have in it, but the process of it. But I also like how she goes into some definitions and some reasons for doing this. Um, and my own abbreviated version of a definition of a capsule wardrobe is just a small collection of useful clothing that you love. Like at its core, that's what it is. Certainly, there's all sorts of people who go into different numbers of how many clothing, what type of clothing, what exactly are the pieces and articles of clothing, whether whether you're doing seasonal or if it's just all year, this number of clothing needs to last you. Like there's all sorts of approaches. But yeah. at its core, we are talking about a small collection, useful, meaning like it's functional and it hopefully there's some long longevity to it and you really like the clothing rather than having 25 you know different types of the same article of clothing none of them really work for you we're talking we've pared it down these are the clothes that work for us and that we love yes and i found the episode that courtney was on it's episode 59 perfect so, yes <laughs> sorry <laughs> all right so Uh, Let's start with her top three reasons to build a capsule wardrobe. Um, So the first one is to figure out what matters. I love love all three of these reasons, especially number two. Um, So she says, if you're overwhelmed with stuff and busyness, you may have forgotten what really matters to you, um, how you like to spend your time and the dreams you had for your life. Uh, Living and dressing with less helps you reconnect and remember Uh, Sometimes to figure out what matters, you have to get rid of everything that doesn't. Mm. So true. And we say the same thing with spending. So like when we do no spend challenges, sometimes you have to get rid of everything to remember or to realize what really matters, what you really value uh, spending money on. It's the same with clothes. Yeah, I think it it clears the clutter, so to speak, like physically and metaphorically to kind of gain a new perspective, similar to what I think vacations can do for us. Sometimes we wonder why are vacations so different from staycations or just when Mm -hmm. I have a weekend at home. And I think part of it is we remove ourselves from our typical environment and we can get a new perspective on things. And so this is that concept, remove yourself from so much of your typical way of living and, and environment and maybe even what you wear to gain a new perspective. There's often realizations that can come along with that process. 
Mm -hmm. Second reason to build a capsule wardrobe is that it reduces decision fatigue. I'm sure that this is a concept that you've heard about before, but it's really this idea that if we eliminate the number of decisions that we make, we can think more clearly and we have capacity to make the the bigger, more important decisions. Um, that if if we're not needing to choose every single morning between 50 different outfits, we will probably be able to better parent. We will be able to (laughs) better um, work in our environment, at at our careers, at our jobs. This isn't the only thing. We're not saying only if you clear out your clothing, but this kind of mentality where we kind of eliminate decisions that don't really matter to create space for the rest of things. And I think Mm -hmm. this is particularly a problem that we face um, in in the North as, as Americans or as people who are comparatively to the rest of the world wealthy, uh, we have so much, we have so much excess. So, I mean, first of all, it's a privilege to even say, how are we going to pare down our wardrobes? Holy smokes. What a problem to have that we have so many clothing that we've got to figure out how to make our lives more simple. Mm -hmm. But I do think that we can reap a lot of benefits if we can simplify so much. It's part of why I love Aldi. And and I I, it's overwhelming to me to go into regular grocery stores Mm -hmm. now to realize, oh my word, I don't need 25 different choices on peanut butter. It's like I realized that I've now been conditioned to have one or two options. And I like Mm -hmm. that. And it does create space and freedom. And it takes less time to shop at Aldi. Anyhow, we're not talking about groceries. We're talking about clothing. But similar (laughs) concept that if I've got less clothes in my closet, I, I have less decisions to make on it. Life is simpler and I'm freed up for other things. Yeah, definitely. And and that kind of like bleeds over into the next one is that it creates more space and time for what you love. So fewer decisions you have to make, more time you have for everything else. And when you figure out what matters, that's what you can fill that time with. Less so frustration, less time of being frustrated. Mm-hmm. I've got nothing to wear. Everything's in the laundry or you got to dig through stuff. Holy smokes. Yes. Yeah. So I found that the the article, once we get into the, um, you know, the step-by-step, it felt to me a lot like meal planning. <laughs> so, Everything goes back to food. Like you, you for, we can't sure. do a capsule wardrobe episode without food. I'm hungry right now. So <laughs> that's maybe why. But so, so the first one on uh, her list on how, step-by-step how to build a capsule wardrobe is to first see So to take out all of your clothes, your accessories, your jewelry, your shoes, put it all on the bed, get it all in your um, in your eyesight so that you can easily uh, see and sort. I can't stress this one enough. And I will say I've tried both methods. I've tried the get it all out. Let me see everything. And I've tried the method of just like one drawer at a time. But I feel like when it comes to clothing, you have got to see it all at once because you forget Mm -hmm. what you have and you could be keeping things around that you don't actually need because when you're able to see it all at once, you can see, oh, this is actually how many tank tops I have or how many long Mm -hmm. sleeve shirts or sweaters or scarves or you name it. I I, So so yes, you do have to carve out a good amount of time, particularly depending on how much (laughs) you have. It might not all fit on your bed, let's be honest. You might need to haul all this to your living room or like the largest room of your house. And, but make sure you can see it all. I really, I, I can't encourage that enough. Yeah, I love the, the last line. It might make you laugh or cry, but either way, you'll never want to do this again. <laughs> yeah, so it'll keep you on that trajectory. I, uh-huh. I'll i tell you, man, yes, I got to a bad point where things were just shoved and it was overwhelming to see how much I had and yeah, not doing that again. Yep. Okay, so now that it's all laid out and you've got it sprawled everywhere and you feel incredibly overwhelmed, you got to get to work. And number two is sort. So you're going to want to move the clothes to different piles. And these are the four different piles that you want to make. Love, 
<laughs> that one's easy. Like, I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. It fits me well. I wear it often. My goodness, like, don't have me depart from, like, my second born. Two, second pile is maybe. Like, I I think I want to keep this. I don't quite know why. I'm not quite ready to make a full decision on this. So, like, possibly I'll come back to it. Third pile is donate. This just doesn't fit my body or my life. I never wear it. I haven't worn it in a year. We're going to donate this. And lastly is trash. I will say repurpose if possible. I hate seeing clothing go to the the dump. But I mean, if we're talking like undies that should have never been in your closet for five years, yeah. Um, but if it's possible to make it into rags or if it if it can go to a friend or something like that. But yeah, that could be a whole another pile. But mm-hmm. mostly we're talking love it, maybe donate and keep going uh, <laughs> until you have gone through your entire pile. Uh, yeah, she says, roll around on your bed, get your feet up in the air, scream, drink water, eat snacks, but don't stop. Like, this yeah. is why you've got to carve out the time because otherwise then you're just going to be stuck with a trash pile that just keeps getting moved around and then you sleep mm-hmm. there and then it never ends and then you get tired of it and then you just shove it back all in your closet again. So, no, that's not happening this <laughs> time. We're doing it all at once. You can see we're, like, speaking from, like, things that have actually <laughs> happened in our lives. This is, like, how I talk to myself when I'm doing this. And then you need to get the items that you're planning on on getting rid of, on donating, out of your house. Like, immediately. Yes. That, like, that day, if possible, even if that means it's moving to the garage or it's moving into your car. But we want to avoid the time when you get so tired of seeing the piles that you just throw it back into your closet. Don't waste all the hard work that you've done. Yeah, I always put it straight into my car. Like I don't even let it sit in my house. So that way it's there. And I can just when I'm by a thrift store, I just drop it off. It's already there. But once you've done your initial sweep, go back through again. So now look at what is in my love pile, what's in my maybe pile, and see, okay, are these items that I do still want to keep, or is it still so much that I should go back through my maybe pile, compare it to what I have in my love pile? Do I have similar items already that that what was in my maybe I now can toss? Because now you've even got fresh eyes on things. You're probably so frustrated that you can (laughs) run off of that motivation to be like, you know what? We're just, we're, we're tossing stuff. I'm not doing this anymore. Get rid of the weight. Or maybe you want to take, you want to sleep in your bed and then the next morning yeah. take a re- relook at yeah. your love and maybe. Worst case scenario, you can put your maybe, not even worst case. This is a great step that you can do. You can put your maybe pile into plastic bins and put that into your garage or your attic or under your bed and sit on it for a little bit. But definitely mm-hmm. don't keep your donate and trash piles. Those have got to get out of the house. Otherwise, yeah. you'll change your mind. Exactly. Um, and then the next step is choose. So she's specifically talking about choosing 33 items um, by category. So, And this is across. This isn't in each category. This is just across all the categories. And most people say 30 to 40 items is a capsule wardrobe. That's not hard and fast. You you choose. There's no number. The number is not important. The important thing is that you are being intentional with your choices. Mm -hmm. Um, So she has a, a list of different things, and we'll go into that in the next one. But like, you have to choose like Jeans, dresses, skirts, like make sure you have a variety of of things you wear. Like she also has like button down shirts and blazers. I am not going, I don't own a blazer. I'm not going to get a blazer. I don't wear blazers. I work at home. Yeah. I'm wearing my pajama shorts right now. So I mean, that's it, this, what people, what are on people's lists is not going to be the same for everyone. Mm-hmm. So Be intentional. If you live in a climate that is very radical in seasons, then... (laughs) What a kind, strength-based way of describing that. (laughs) 
<laughs> then thank you. I mean, then you'll have to go with uh, separate capsules. So you'll need a winter capsule and a summer capsule and, you know, et cetera. Um, but first, so for me, we have two seasons. We have hot and not hot. And so I have... Hot and hotter. <laughs> yeah, hot and hotter. So I have... Uh, I, I used to have two, like, wardrobes, but then I did the KonMari um, cleaning, and now I just have one. I don't even have separates. Um, but that's kind of getting a little out of control. So I'm going to have to, like, redo. But so it just... It's based on your lifestyle and where you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. You do have to edit. It's not like, oh, I've arrived. Sometimes clothing gets worn out or it doesn't fit anymore or we we change careers or we're doing something different with our lives or COVID hits and suddenly it's sweatpants yeah. and we don't need blazers anymore. So, <laughs> yes, it can shift throughout life. But the goal of this is, for us at least, is to approach this category or of our lives in a frugal way. You can mm -hmm. do a capsule wardrobe and spend a ton of money. So it's not as if this is always going to be the most frugal way of doing something. You know, some people will will do capsule wardrobe and every single season change out what their capsule is. And they they buy the most expensive pants and the most expensive coats and all this stuff. So there yes, there's all different types of approaches. The way that that I do it, and I think we are suggesting for our frugal friends, is that this can be a way towards frugality and mm -hmm. that we can use what's in our closets already to keep us from spending more and more every time we go to the store, but to say, you know what, how do we aim at contentment with what's in our closet, but also make sure that what's in our closet we like and we wear and it suits our purposes so that we can be content with what we have. And, exactly. And I think you're describing some barriers too. Like, and I think that's worth talking about. Like, w what would keep people from doing this? And I think one of them, first of all, it's the seasonal thing that you've already mentioned. And so there you go. If you live in a place that has, how did you describe it? Uh, dra drastic changes in uh, yeah, climate. Ex extremes. Uh, yeah. Like, so, yeah. yes have different capsule wardrobes. Like you don't have to do it the same as someone living in San Diego who is like always in 70 degree weather. It looks different yeah. for you. Also, there's this question of, oh my word, you're going to take it all away from me. Like all of my clothes, I've got to give it all up. No, we're saying let's get rid of the things that we don't like anyways that cause clutter that mm -hmm. we don't wear doesn't suit our purposes so that we can see what we actually wear so that we can reduce decision fatigue and so that we have space for more in our lives. It doesn't have to be 33 items. It can be if you like that challenge. But pairing down to the essentials. Mm -hmm. And no, you don't have to give it up. Again, like I said, if you've got your maybe pile and you're like uncertain, what if I do end up wanting to wear this? Put it in a bin, put it away, but get it out of sight and start to feel what it's like to live with less. Yeah. And even if you have a capsule wardrobe, that doesn't mean that you are not allowed to go shopping. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can still, if that's something that if you there's something you need or if you just want to go shopping, if that is something you enjoy and you've put it in your budget, mm -hmm. you don't have to stop just because you have a capsule wardrobe. Yeah. You um, can add things to it and yeah. then re you know, redo it every season or year. Yeah, you can add things or even and and take things away. Rule that I made for myself once I felt like I got to a point where, all right, my closet is at its max and where I want it to be so I can still like see everything all at once and I don't have to like have really strong muscles to like dig through my closet and get dressed in the morning. <laughs> uh, although I do want strong muscles, <laughs> but not for that reason. <laughs> I made a rule for myself that if I bring something else in, I've got to get rid of something. Mm -hmm. So if I do want to go to the thrift store and get like crazy good deals because that just like re revives me for whatever reason, then when I bring home a shirt, I've got to get rid of a shirt. If I bring home a pair of pants, I've got to get rid of a pair of pants. And so it's made me more intentional with my purchases and made me question, do I really need this? Is this better than what I already have? Will this last me longer than what I already have? Is this an upgrade from that other shirt that I typically wear, those kinds of things. And yeah, it has 
created just greater intentionality with my spending. Mm -hmm. Good word. And so I think that can lead us to our next article, uh, which is 10 capsule wardrobe essentials. So like, what should you have? And I have seen a lot of lists Mm -hmm. and a lot of people have a lot of different opinions. And I think it's like the people that write these are more like fashion-y. So they have maybe Mm -hmm. a bigger, they wear more types of clothing uh, than I would. So (laughs) these 10 actually are an expansion of what What my wardrobe includes. (laughs) Yeah, I think Courtney had 13 and this one has 10. Yeah. And it's still an expansion. But we'll go through it. And like Jen said, mm-hmm. though, this is still not, this does not have to be exactly what your closet looks like. There is freedom yeah. in all of this. But to give a guideline or a template for what the experts of capsule wardrobes typically say, here it is. Yes. And this one's from The Blissful Mind. And uh, yeah, so the first one I I this I ha- I will say first this is my color palette. If you go to this website and see the examples, it's literally all black and then some white and gray and then one denim shirt, <laughs> which but it's also all all black. I like as well, but I will say I think that that's a barrier for people also is that they think like, okay, capsule yeah. wardrobe, so it all has to match. Therefore, I'm going to look like I'm in mourning all of the time. And that's not true either. And definitely search the internet for your more funky, fun. You can choose your color palette. I will say it is easier if you're really paring down to choose a color palette where most things match with most things. But mm-hmm. it does not have to be gray, black, and white. Unless you love yeah. that. Unless you love right. that. Everyone's like, you have to have a little black dress. You don't. Yeah. You don't. Maybe your little black dress is blue mm-hmm. or red. Yeah. Your or all dress, of the colors. Yeah. Your dress can be whatever color you want it to be. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even have to be little. Be whatever you want. It doesn't but. have to be little. <laughs> A big old colorful dress. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes. So first on this list is tank tops. So, yeah. I mean, like, yes, because you can wear it under shirts, <laughs> over shirt, no, under shirts. Uh, tank tops are just, my shirts right yeah, now. Yeah, just tank tops. It's 100 degrees outside. Right. <laughs> and and tank tops, especially if they are simple, can go with a lot of different things. I wear them a lot with shorts as well as dresses, as well as to work out in so you just can go from morning to noon to night in a tank top. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you want to have a variety of colors, including black, white, and gray. <laughs> or peach, uh, teal, and brown. I know. Right now, so if you're on the YouTube video, you will see that Jill is wearing pink and flowers and She's got hoop earrings in, and I'm wearing just like a gray t shirt. You've got a cute little bandana in your head. I in do. Your head, well, because your head. <laughs> my hair is still re- like post birth regrowing, it's still a problem. All right. Next is a short sleeve tee. So you'll want to have, you can have all or one depending on your preference, but V neck, scoop neck, and crew neck. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, 
take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. Simple Truth Brand makes it easy to find better for you products that are free from unwanted ingredients. From fresh produce and snacks to household cleaners and more. You won't find artificial ingredients, preservatives, or harsh chemicals in Simple Truth products. So you can fill your fridge and your home with simple, easy-to-understand choices you can feel good about. Just look for the green Simple Truth Circle to get the quality items you want free from the ingredients you don't want. Simple Truth. Exclusively at Baker's. Again, you want to have a variety of colors. Black, white, (laughs) and gray. (laughs) Yes. Or yellow, chartreuse. <laughs> no, that's the same thing. Um, <laughs> what else do I want to say? Orange. Chartreuse is a little green. <laughs> and green. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but those are, yeah. I mean, I'm literally wearing a, a gray scoop neck right now and it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, I. what am I wearing? Crew neck? Yeah. Um, I think you're wearing crew. Yeah. yeah. It's a blouse. It's a, it is a blouse and it's an embroidered mm-hmm. blouse. And I love it. And it works for me. And I wear it with a lot of different things. But yes, I do especially like t-shirts, especially your plain tees, because they can go from very casual to a bit more professional, depending Mm -hmm. on what you pair it with. If you do pair it with a nice cardigan or a blazer or, or some dress pants versus putting it with your yoga pants or your shorts. So I, I think that particularly some good teas are good. Now, Mm -hmm. this is another thing. This does not give us license or permission to go and buy all of these things because we think we need them because a cute blog made them look cool. Uh, You don't need all three of the different types of necks. You don't need all the different colors that they say that you need. Just look for what you already have uh, and pare it down to your favorites. And maybe you would get to the end and say, you know what? I am missing kind of an essential tea or an essential cardigan. Fine. And maybe that replaces like three other things that hardly work. Yeah. But so I will say like, so the next two on the list, um, are long sleeve tees and blouses. Mm -hmm. And so I don't own those. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, really have any reason to wear a blouse. Like I don't do business meetings. The business meetings I do do are with other people in their pajama shorts. And then (laughs) a long sleeve tease, it just doesn't really get that cold here. And so I do own more tank tops and more t-shirts because I don't own these other things. So that's another reason to just do yeah. you. Whereas I do. I have like a good amount of my wardrobe is what I can wear professionally um, mm-hmm. when I am with clients or doing training. So uh, that that's a good portion of my it's, – it's why, Jen, you see me wearing this shirt that like looks like, oh, my word, you're so dressed up. It's so funny because I will get together with people in the evenings and we're like, you always look so put together. And it's really not that I'm trying. It's just that this is my wardrobe. I have four shirts. I've got three pants. I've got a couple of skirts and a couple of dresses. And that it, – it it's comfy. For me, I have found things that are comfortable to me that I really like, but I can wear it both professionally. That just takes me into the evening as well. So it's because I have a capsule wardrobe that I now look put together. And honestly, I don't mind that. Now I'm like, great. I can just be all day in something that I really like. And it looks like people think that like I try, which is nice. (laughs) Yes. You're grow- I am known up. for trying. Whoa. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Let's let's breeze then through the rest of this list. You've got sweaters, of course, that depends on climate, but having a few typical like sweaters that work for you. Um, they say black dress, again, like Jen said, doesn't have to be a black dress. Certainly they can be paired with a lot of different things. Um, you're not cu- in a box with the type of shoes that you need to have and purses and accessories, but a dress. Find a, find a mm-hmm. dress or two that you really like and works. Yeah, versatile dress. Um, then we've got cardigan. That's something that I do have uh, a few of because that's, you know, our winters are kind of cardigan winters. Um, But blazers, the next one, don't have them. Don't have any blazers. 
I actually do have one because I got it from my friend. I will say that, but it's kind of, it's a sweater material. So it's just like a fancy sweater. So maybe you're getting some things that are versatile in that way, like a blazer that's kind of like a sweater. And the final two are jeans or ankle pants, you know, your typical kind of lounge around, but also be able to go out on the weekend. And then they say black skirt. Again, I will argue skirt of some sort. Uh, If you want, if that's your style. If not, then add in a few more pants or jeans. Done. Yeah. That's your list of 10. There is your 10. But for like me, it's still like six. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) T-shirt, pants. Yeah, they they, they didn't mention shorts, like the different no. type, like and they didn't mention your loungewear either. So mm-hmm. I do think sometimes when people talk about how many things are in their capsule, they're they're not including loungewear, pajamas, work grunge clothes, like actual kind of like manual labor clothes. So yeah. again, you got to make it work for you. Which is also sometimes what I'm wearing throughout the day. So, you know, but... <laughs> You know what's not grungy? Ooh, and I can always make work for me. Yes. The The Bill bill of the the Week. week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Hi, Jen and Jill. This is Chanel from Victoria, Texas. And I was just calling to let you know about my Bill of the Week. Um, Your podcast first off has really changed my husband and I's marriage where we're becoming more frugal together and it's been great. Um, In January, we got rid of all of our subscriptions and really haven't noticed a difference except the fact that we're saving almost like $200 a month. So that's really great. Um, I also had the courage from one of your episodes to try to negotiate my rent rate and I was able to lower it an extra $70, which will be saving us over $800 over the course of this next year. So I hate paying my rent every month, but at least this is the lowest it's ever been. And it all came, it all started because of you guys. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing and stay safe. Bye. Oh my gosh, Chanel. Chanel. Thanks so much for calling in and congratulations. Like things that we just think aren't even possible in slashing our budgets. You negotiated your rent lower. That is so amazing. Yes. Oh my gosh. And people say that can't be done. So I hope that people listening will be encouraged by this because yes, it is difficult, Mm -hmm. but... I mean, we're hearing it $800 over the next year. What can you do with $800 that you would have just been giving to your landlord? Yeah. Yes. Not to mention all the other money that you've saved from cutting subscriptions. You've already saved $200 a month. You're just finding money. Well done. It's so wonderful. Chanel. Uh Simple Truth Brand makes it easy to find better for you products that are free from unwanted ingredients. From fresh produce and snacks to household cleaners and more, you won't find artificial ingredients, preservatives, or harsh chemicals in Simple Truth products. So you can fill your fridge and your home with simple, easy-to-understand choices you can feel good about. Just look for the green Simple Truth circle to get the quality items you want free from the ingredients you don't want. Simple Truth, exclusively at Baker's. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. You might be asking yourself, what is Sibling Revelry? Yeah, well, we just made it up. They'll have some laughs and maybe inspire some people along the way with universal tales of what it's like to grow up with brothers and sisters. We're full-blood siblings, the only full-blood sibling. In our family. Well, not in the world. I mean, no, in the whole world. That's just it. Like, no one. (laughs) Dive into family tales and explore the human mind with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up, you know, to really like 
all kinds of different siblings and it's going to be an awesome season. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now it's time (laughs) for the next most exciting, the lightning Lightning round. round. So Jill and I are going to go round robin and we're going to talk about, so what you always wear and what you never wear, but people say that you should. (laughs) (laughs) yes what do you got i think i've been really vocal about it so far (laughs) i guess we we could probably guess what jen always wears so jill so why don't you start out then okay so things that people say you should have in a capsule wardrobe and that i agree with or that i do always wear like cardigans and scarves are pretty standard for me, and it really doesn't matter the season. Uh, winter, winter, spring, summer, a fall. Mm. There you go. <laughs> That's my. You're just gonna get singing <laughs> somehow every episode. That is all that we're allowed to play, like, sing <laughs> yes. of that song. Yeah, otherwise, though. it's gonna sound too much like the original. So, and I have my winter scarves and my summer scarves. I've got my more sheer. I just like them. I feel like it dresses up uh, my outfits. Also, I travel a ton, and I find that scarves are really helpful in case the plane is cold. I mean, granted, 2020, my travel has gone on down the tubes. <laughs> but, so maybe I could get rid of my scarves. Nah. But they help as like maybe a blanket or you can wrap it around you as a shawl. I just feel like they're so versatile and I love them. And cardigans, holy smokes, where would I be without you? <laughs> I feel like I'm giving a speech at like the Tonys. I don't even know what the Tonys are, but to my clothes, to cardigans and scarves. I don't know what I would be or who I would look like without you. Doesn't matter the season. You're always there for me. Yes. So uh, would you say that scarves might be your signature accessory? Like, what would you say is your signature? Signature? I don't think I'm to that level of fashion to say that I've got a signature. No, but like, it's just something that you're always like wearing. Like, it's your go-to. Yeah, sure. Yes. Maybe that most people don't wear all of the time. I'm not wearing a scarf right now, but yeah, it's, it's a staple for me. It may be something that, that sets, it doesn't set me apart. People wear scarves. I like hats too. I don't have a ton of them, but I wear scarves more. Sure. Sure. Jen, for the sake of this conversation. Yes. And. (laughs) Okay, I would say my signature accessory would be pearl earrings. Mm. They are really my go-to. I don't wear a lot of jewelry besides my wedding rings and my pearl earrings. That's kind of my go-to, my safe space, because they go with everything. They look great on you. Thank you. And I would love to wear, like, I used to wear a lot of hoops. I used to be much more adventurous with my fashion. (laughs) Um, and then you had a baby. Now I, now I don't go out much. <laughs> so that's that I think would be my signature. Um, and also athletic wear. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is because I work out three to four days a week. And so I just figure I'll just wear what I'm going to work out in. During the day, too, because nobody sees me. So that's the difference, though, between you and I feel like most of the rest of people. That, <laughs> yeah. Like people are just wearing athletic yeah. wear as if they're about to work out and it doesn't actually happen. It's different if, oh. yes, I am going to the gym <laughs> and I'm wearing athletic wear versus this is just I'm not like you're probably not going to find me working out. But this is what oh, I, I thought you meant like. Other people don't stay in their house all day, oh, no. like me. <laughs> What's the difference between you and other people? Like other people go outside. <laughs> no, no. no. Okay. I, yeah. I was giving you a compliment about you working <laughs> out, but yes. 
Thank you. So, so something that yeah. I feel is always on these lists of capsule wardrobes that just confuse me. I mean, it's not that I don't wear these things, but I also don't feel like they should count in the overall number of items that you have. And first of all, jewelry. Now, I don't wear a ton of jewelry, and I have crossed over to saying I pretty much want my jewelry to be real because I do want to pare down. I don't want to have a ton of costume jewelry. So I ha- I am beginning to make Make the crossover into everything that I wear being real jewelry, real gold, real gems, real silver, so that it can last and it doesn't like give me infections because been there, done that, <laughs> and I'm not 17 anymore. Uh, and so I, I do typically, like, I want to wear my necklace in the pool, in the shower, wherever. And so, yes. However, I don't count that. Like, if it's just constantly on my body, I'm not counting jewelry. And also, sunglasses? What? They're just essential. Sunglasses yeah. are, are not a part of your capsule wardrobe. Like, you just, you need to have sunglasses. Your eyes need them. Your eyes. That's not, that's not a capsule thing, that, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I also agree with the jewelry thing. And then also, heels <laughs> are not in my capsule wardrobe. Uh, because I have some heels that I got uh, from a friend, and actually I will have to wear them in her wedding. Uh, but I, other than that, like skinny heels, like real heels, I why, why? Because they make you look good. I don't know. People think no. that they make their legs look good, and then you, and then it makes you taller. But you don't need that. I don't need to be taller. So that's probably just a thing from my height. Like, I've always been taller, so I've never worn heels. So that is a thing. I did go through a short phase where I bought some, like, wedges uh, because I was, like, single and bitter. And I was like, psh, I'm going to be taller than everyone. (laughs) I'm going to tower above them and be better. That was an unhealthy period in my life. Wow. But I got out of it. Good. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's all. So, Jill, are you um, are you still wearing cardigans and scarves? <laughs> I think I said cardigans and scarves doesn't matter the season. <laughs> I know. I must have still been living in Pennsylvania. You because, were. You were. <laughs> no, there are no there are no cardigans and scarves happening anymore. I'll tell you what is happening, dresses, and that doesn't matter the season. I have dove headfirst into Florida living, and I love skirts and dresses. I work from home. No one ever sees me. It's really not even about that. It's so comfortable, and and I can go from home to something that I need to do in the great outdoors. With ease. Yeah. <laughs> and it is part of my capsule wardrobe. For me, still not a lot of jewelry. And I have become more picky as I get older. And I have made a statement that I want all of my jewelry that I wear often, like I have rings that I just never take off. And they need to be real, like real gold, real gem stones, the real deal, so that I can wear them in the shower and I can do dishes while wearing them. Mm-hmm. And so that also has been com- like really minimized by not doing a bunch of costume jewelry, only getting nice pieces here and there. That has also minimized. And I love all the jewelry that I wear. And it's real. <laughs> Mine has transformed a little bit as well. When we recorded this episode, I would work out in the afternoon. So I'd wear my athletic wear during the day and then go work out. Now I work out in the mornings. So I'm wearing regular clothes throughout the day. I don't wear athletic wear anymore unless I'm working out. So I am still buying secondhand, but like very just uh, a lot of cotton, just a lot of cotton um, and tank tops in the summer. So my, it's the same wardrobe, but just like less athletic wear during the day because I work out in the morning and still Mm -hmm. no heels. Um, I do have one pair of heels and it is the same pair that I had two years ago and that's it. But it's like, it's a chunky heel. It's actually pretty comfortable and I got them for free, Um, but still no, not really any jewelry, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe some earrings, a necklace here and there. We basic. 
That's we base we so basic, <laughs> but we both have the basic white girl nose ring that yes, never comes do. off. Why have we, we not talked about that? Well, Jen and I both have a nose ring. We have. I, I have talked about it on other people's podcasts. Oh, Somebody I think said, us. "Yeah, well, we'll talk about that. We'll we can talk about that later." But okay. thank you so much for listening. Uh, many of you know we have a private community where we do monthly money challenges and offer accountability groups. And we want to congratulate one of our members today for a big win. This one's from Allison. She says, I just paid off my car loan 19 months early and saved hundreds in interest. Last year, I saved my bonus and continue to save to build a good emergency fund. This year, bonus uh, paid off my car loan with some left over for other savings goals. So congrats, Allison. Congratulations, Allison. That's such a big deal. That's saving hundreds in interest is so huge. And we hope that Mm -hmm. you're finding some good use of that, where that car payment used to be, where you can funnel that money into awesome other stuff that's more values based. So congrats. Yeah. So thanks for listening. If you want to check out our monthly challenge community, head to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash club to see what challenge we have coming up next. See you next week. Frugal Friends is produced by Eric Sirianni. So you talk so, about our nose rings on other podcasts? I did recently when someone was like, oh, the, I love your nose ring. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's so basic. Jill has one, too. It is the the basic white girl nose ring. <laughs> like, and, and you're if you're listening, you can't see it right now. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. It's, a, it's a hoop. Just, you know, just a very thin. Mine's rose gold because my uh, wedding rings are rose gold. But... Jen just has very the very dainty basic. hoop, and I have the very, very tiny stud. Most people yes. don't realize that I have a nose ring because it's that small. I forget that I have it because it's that small. But all mm-hmm. of my nieces and nephews, it's so funny. They hit like age two and they suddenly notice it, but they're kind of creeped out by it. Like they they always <laughs> look mesmerized. It's, it's, uh, it's always right around two. Each one of them right in line have gone through this phase where they see it and they just kind of start to stare. And I realize what they're staring at. And I'm like, oh, is it my nose ring? I'm like, do you like it? And they're just kind of like a deer in the headlights. And I'm like, do do you want to touch it? They're like, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> like it's like a spider on me or something. Um, so all of them have been mesmerized. They've all hated it, and I've not changed. Yeah, nobody has ever hated my nose ring, but I have always hated the stud on me. Like I had my, I've had my nose pierced several times. One time I got it pierced. The last time I got it pierced and has stuck. Um, I got my nose pierced with my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law. The three of us got our nose noses pierced together. Amazing. And they never, they'll never pierce it with the hoop. They'll only pierce it with the stud. Mm-hmm. And I've always hated the stud. I worked in restaurants in college. And so several times I had to just take it out completely because they wouldn't let me have it for some reason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was, I mean, I'm, it was a different time back then. I Don't- worked at plenty of places. Yeah. My first jobs, technically, I wasn't allowed to have face jewelry. But again, my stud was so small. I would be like a year into my employment. And they'd be like, oh, you have a nose ring? I was like, yeah, I've had it this whole time. So like, it's no problem, right? Also, that was the <laughs> same place where you weren't allowed to wear perfume. Many, many companies have prohibitions on perfume. Yeah, I get that because some people are sensitive to scents, but nobody is sensitive to somebody else's nose ring. (laughs) So that so finally, when I started working for myself, I got to well, not for myself. I was still working for someone else, but he doesn't care about rules. So he let me do whatever (laughs) I want. You're talking about Eric? (laughs) No. (laughs) When we both started working for Eric, (laughs) my old boss, Greg, he was the best boss, man. I've had man ever since i graduated um grad school and like started working in my field i had one not good boss but then well i've only had two bosses at in my field and one was all right and the other one was like the best like the raddest i just Ugh. and you know that's and Love so i those can't bosses i feel so 
much pain for people who don't have a rad boss. He was a <laughs> um, he was an anarchist, and he was like very into the culture, and and he lived it, and it was just a fantastic ride to watch. <laughs> you weren't it just, on it. You were just watching the ride. Right. Happen. It was a fantastic ride to watch. It was like, <laughs> man, your life. And he's just a regular dude with a wife and two daughters and just and you the know, raddest. This is why people are afraid of nose rings because it leads to conversation about anarchy. So <laughs> You're yeah, this probably is, right. This is why they don't want face jewelry. All right. Well, I take us. it all back. <laughs> I don't take back this episode, though. Neither do I. Simple Truth Brand makes it easy to find better for you products that are free from unwanted ingredients. From fresh produce and snacks to household cleaners and more. You won't find artificial ingredients, preservatives or harsh chemicals in Simple Truth products. So you can fill your fridge and your home with simple, easy to understand choices you can feel good about. Just look for the green Simple Truth Circle to get the quality items you want free from the ingredients you don't want. Simple Truth, exclusively at Baker's. When you download the Baker's app, you have easy access to savings every day. Get the most out of weekly sales and receive personalized coupons to save on your favorite items, all while earning one fuel point for every dollar spent. Baker's makes it easy to save while you shop, whether it's in-store or online, so you get the most value out of every trip, every time. Download the Baker's app now to save big on your next purchase. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Must have a digital account to redeem offers. Restrictions may apply. See site for details.